been said by the panelists. But I think on the IDC side, you know, it's, it's a well known entity in the country. It's, it's one of the largest uh, development finance institutions. So we see it across all the sectors. I mean, we work with all the sectors. And there's opportunities in every sector. And you know, like if I had to categorize them, you know, you've got the opportunities, the large scale opportunities. They're driven by specific industries. For example, the energy sector. You know, you've got the energy sector, you've got the hydrogen economy, you've got uh, you know, solar economies, etc. And that's driving a lot of you know, many large scale projects. And there definitely this big opportunity, not just for the IDC, but for you know, the country, as well as opportunity to attract foreign direct investment into the country as well. Then you've got the, the opportunities that still remain in priority sectors in the country, such as agriculture. You know, there's still a lot to be done in agriculture in terms of processing, agro-processing, uh, downstream beneficiation of agriculture, and those opportunities still uh, exist there. I think, you know, what we also got to look at is uh, not just playing locally in the country, but how do we play internationally? You know, how do we uh, take our industries locally and support those companies to, to play internationally, to export their products? I think, you know, one of the key sectors that we mustn't overlook when we, when we talk about this is the small business finance sector, I think Justin touched on it, as well as the informal sector. In, a, it, it, in as much as when we talk about industrialization, we think large scale factories and massive plants. But if you look at the need of our country in terms of and where the unemployment is sitting, you know, there's, there's a multitude of small scale businesses that need support. And one of the, the things we see there as well, uh, when I talk to constraints, you know, as I talk to opportunities, is what can we do to think about those sectors differently? So you know, how do we think, when we finance a big company, or a big factory, or a big solar plant, how do we think of it as a value chain, and not just as a standalone factory? So you know, if you look, for example, what are the downstream supplies that need to come from a big factory? You know, um, how many SM and SMEs and SMMEs that can be supported by putting up a large-scale factory or a large-scale plant, whatever it is? I think another area that you know we can look at uh, is we always say the challenge is access to finance. That's you know quite a common thing. What is the challenge in, in doing business access to finance? And yes, it is. But an area that you know we really need to solve for is pre-investment support. Uh, at the IDC, you know we've we've got a small business finance unit. The unit I head up that was created about a year and a half, uh, just under two years, and we've we've tested the market. We've done a bit of work there. But what we're realizing now is that. The, the, the space requires different thinking. It requires different risk appetite, and it also requires you know, a very strong pre-investment support uh, mechanism uh, in order to make it easier for those companies to access finance. But I think, you know, all in all, you know, I see there's you know, a lot of opportunity existing driven by you know, industry needs such as energy, uh, driven by gaps that we in South Africa are involved in, in the agro-processing space, etc. But also, you know, having this large multitude of small businesses. Uh, some of them formalized, some of them semi-formalized, formalized, some of them informal. You know, what role can we play to, to bring that into the formal economy? And, and, and you know, if I conclude by saying, if you came to, to me at the IPC and you came to me and you know, fund me, you know, fund a, a, a dairy, uh, you know, a plant, you know, what we would do is say, where is your dairy? Uh, and, you know, what we would look at is who is your role model produce uh, suppliers. And yes, you need to be backed up by uh, what we call you know, a certainty of supply of raw milk. And that will only come from, for example, maybe two or three large scale commercial farmers. But the one question you certainly will be asked at an IDC is within a reasonable radius of that dairy, how many small farmers are there that can actually supply? Yeah? And you know, if there's even 20 or 30 small farmers, and yes, they're not going to make up. 50% of your raw material supply. They might make up 5% of it, but that is how you bring them into the mainstream economy. You take that a step further, we don't want our small scale businesses just to play at the primary level, the small level. How do you take those farmers who are producing that raw milk and you find a way to, to fund their shareholding, even if it's 10% into that area? So you are actually promoting them from the primary stage to the next year of processing, where the margins are bigger as you move up the scale. So I think all in all, there's a lot of opportunities. I think we, as, as, as a country, need to think, you know, uh, why broader? And I think, you know, there's, there's uh, many opportunities that uh, we need to capture. I think, and if, if we do it, and we do it successfully, 
uh, you know, the, the effects of that is the, you know, the um, reduction in the unemployment rate, you know, the upliftment of society and all the things that you know, are part of all 